our second guest of this special episode, the national champion, the world champion, the do it all gymnastics person, man. I don't even know what else to say. Maggie Nichols, what's up, Maggie? Hey, thanks for having me. I'm excited. Thanks for coming on. All right. So, Maggie, I got to start this off by a quick story, right? This isn't even on the script. So I, I just got to tell, I got to tell Sooner Nation how we met, right? So I know yeah. exactly what he's going to say. He's fangirling. <laughs> no, I remember it really well too. So, oh my gosh, let me Good just time. get this story out. Maggie already knows what I'm about to say. I've told, okay, I'm fanboying. Okay. Okay. Jeez. All right. It's okay, man. Okay. okay. Real quick, real quick. All right, Sooner Nation. So, so you guys know I'm a I'm a fifth year senior, right? I'm old, right? I've been in the game for a while, a while. Okay, so I arrive on campus in 2017, right? I have a little I have a little back injury, okay? So I gotta go get an MRI. This is like my second or third week on campus, okay? So I get dropped off at the at the place. I don't know where I was at, but I can't I can't even remember. But I get dropped off to get my MRI, right? And um, I'm sitting patiently, waiting, quiet, minding my own business. And I, and I see this girl sitting next to me, okay? She's wearing a Sooner shirt. I think at the time, I was wearing a Sooner shirt. And um, I introduce myself. I say, hey, like, I just got to OU. Like, what's your name? You know, my name's Jeremiah. And um, this girl says her name is Maggie, right? So... <laughs> Long story short, right? I introduced myself. I get her Instagram and everything, and um, I did. I didn't look at her Instagram at the time, though. I was just like, oh, "Okay, hey, what's up? Okay, I'll look at it later." And so, whenever my Instagram is all over, I mean, not my Instagram. Whenever my MRI is all over, and I go back in the car with whoever dropped me off, I pull up her Instagram and go to follow her back, right? This girl has like 150,000 oh. followers and is super duper popular. And I'm like, who did I just talk to? And it is oh my gosh. none other. <laughs> it is none other than the amazing woman that we have today on our podcast, Maggie <laughs> Nichols. Oh my gosh. What a great story. I remember that so well. I know it was, it was like, it was like it happened yesterday, no? I know. Yeah, he's gonna Great. take that one to the grave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. Well, we won't waste any time, Maggie. You know, we're just gonna we're just gonna hop right into it, right? So my first okay. question of the day. A lot of kids do gymnastics, right? Mm -hmm. When they're young, when they're growing up. When did you realize that you were just better than everyone else? Um, I think I really realized when I was about like seven or eight, um, my coach just kind of pulled me out of my uh, group and the level that I was in and had me do, you know, extra turns. I was in the gym more hours than everyone else. And they were kind of just like, um, moving me up, like doing harder skills and things like none of the other girls were doing. So I kind of realized at a younger age, just because I was doing stuff all by myself and moving a lot faster than the girls um, that were my age. Um, but I think when I really realized that I had a shot at like going to the Olympics or world championships, I was probably around 12. Um, just when I was training with girls that were 18 years old, way older than I was. And I kind of was just, um, you know, training by myself and the coaches were, you know, giving me harder assignments and things like that. But was that frustrating, you know, growing up or did you take it as a challenge or what were you thinking at such a young age? Because I know. I know that, you know, gymnastics, you typically hit your peak at a younger age compared to football or basketball. I know you got to get started early. So was that frustrating? Yeah. It definitely was. There were times. But I mean, ever since I was a little girl, I think since I was like five, I, my dream was to go to the Olympics. And so I love doing the extra work. I loved the hard days. Well, I didn't love it at the time, but, you know, looking back, but I, I just, I always wanted to be better. I wanted to, you know, be the best that I could and get as good as I possibly could and, you know, make it to world championships and make it to Olympic trials and things like that. So, you know, those hard days and those frustrating days 
were definitely worth it. And, um, you know, I wouldn't change it for the world. Love it. Love it. Now, side question. Well, two side questions, actually. There, I know that uh, being a gymnast, you say long days, hard days. Now, I mean, when you talk about long days, those days are actually long. Like, <laughs> aren't y'all taking like all day to train? That like, that's a long yeah. day for y'all, right? Yeah. Before I came to college, I was training um, some some days five hours, some days seven hours. It kind of just depended on the days I switched off. Um, but, you know, I only went to school half day and did the rest online. So, I mean, I my whole life was gymnastics and training and, you know, going to the gym to weightlift and then going to practice and, you know, all of that. But coming to college, we still train four hours every single day. I mean, we have like a day or two off, but still a lot. I mean, you have to train consistently to be really good in the sport and continue to, you know, get stronger and things like that. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And I think that's a, something that a lot of people don't know. But then my second side question is, what makes a good gymnast? You know what I'm saying? Like there's certain attributes for a football player that, you know, you might be really strong. You might be really fast. You might have a really good bend, you know, to get around the edge. Like what 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 is the characteristic or some characteristics that makes a really good gymnast? I think there's a lot that builds a really strong gymnast. I mean, obviously you have to be a little bit of a daredevil and go for, you know, really scary skills and stuff. But also the discipline um, is a really big thing just because you have to be disciplined outside of the gym, inside of the gym. I mean, if you want to be a great gymnast, you can't be, you know, eating bad and staying up late and all that kind of stuff. So I think discipline is a huge thing, um, you know, hard worker, uh, motivated, um, but someone who has all of the factors together, I think really builds a great gymnast. Love it. Speaking of being a great gymnast, you know, obviously we all know that you're one of those greats. What's going through your mind as you're getting ready to do a routine? Like, what do you think? Is there, or do you even think, or do you just go out there and just say, like, you know, forget everything else? I'm gonna just go out there and do my job. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I definitely think, but I think for me, something that really helped me become such a dominant gymnast. Um, in practice, I was really hard on myself. And I kind of had the mindset of a competition every single turn that I took. And I would say like, okay, this is a competition routine. This is this blah, blah, blah. And so I think that really prepared me for competitions. And when I was um, competing, you know, my coaches put me in the position to, you know, hit a great routine, they know I'm going to hit it. I've done the training, you know, so I would just, you know, get in my zone. Um, and really to say, like, you do what you do every day and don't do anything different and show everyone what you've been working so hard for. You know, I kind of thrived off that because no one really sees what you do behind the scenes in practice. And they come out to your competitions to watch you and support you. And so I kind of wanted to, you know, put on a little show and show them what I've been working so hard for and, to, you know, help the team win um, that competition or a national championship. Of course. Right. <laughs> so is there – do you consider – yourself to have a specialty in any of the events like is there one that you know that you're better than in the other compared to any of the rest um so I did all around so I competed all of them but I think I was better at bars and beam um you know I had a ton of different skills on those events um so I'd say that those two are my specialty but I always tried to be consistent on all four events like difficulty wise so um I don't know. That was something I always just set a big goal for myself to be like very consistent, but probably bars and beams. <laughs> you know, I remember as a freshman going to one of the meets and watching you do your floor routine, your floor <laughs> routine. And I was like, man, like this girl is so like just expressive, yeah. you know, special. And <laughs> I don't know. It was just the energy that not only you, but your teammates provided and I was just like, mm -hmm. man, like I've never watched, I, I, I never grew up watching gymnastics just because it, it wasn't just something that I was into, but seeing yeah. you perform and the rest of your teammates cheer you on as well as the rest of the gang, you know, you're part of the reason why I watch even to this day. So I, yeah. I, I, I love watching you and, and the rest of the yeah. OU Center Nation. So thanks. You know, I think more people should come out and see how exciting it really is because I think people don't really realize gymnastics is as exciting that it is. Like you said, like you didn't really expect that, but I mean, 
gymnastics is such like a unique sport like it's different than everything every other sport so if you're listening to this please come out and support us teammates <laughs> teammates everybody yeah. rally the troops we're gonna be there in full Woo. we got you even though i won't be competing but i'll be coaching so <laughs> there you go we'll be there sweet man another question we have so you were a contender for the 2016 Olympics, right? And you probably would have made it if not for a knee injury. So at the time, what was going through your mind when you found out that you weren't going to make the team? Yeah, it was it was a really difficult time. Um, I had surgery just like two or three months, I think, before Olympic trial. So I definitely wasn't at my strongest. And it was hard because um, right before that knee injury, I was like the second behind Simone and so it was it was really disappointing going into Olympic trials not being at my best um but you know I was like I'm at Olympic trials like I'm gonna enjoy this and do the best that I can and you know whatever happens happens and you know I also had the mindset like I'm going to Oak home after this so you know it's a win-win either way so I just tried to stay positive and I was blessed to even be at Olympic trials and you know wear USA again so that kind of just helped me and then knowing that I was going to Oklahoma was um you know, helps as well. <laughs> um, you know, going going through all that, and obviously, I know you have met a lot of great people, great gymnasts like Simone, like you mentioned, and everything like that. Uh, can you talk about some of the relationships you have with some of them great gymnastic gymnasts? Yeah, uh, yeah. Me and Simone were best friends um, for a long, long time. I mean, we were always roommates together. The national staff always put us together because. We kind of just clicked and we kind of were all the two goofy ones. Like we are always the ones like dancing, listen to fun music and the, the loud ones in the group. So they always put us together. So me and Simone always had such a great relationship and she actually came to a couple OU gym meets. So that was really fun. And I saw her recently in Washington, D.C. And I felt like our relationship was um, the same as it always has been. But, you know, being able to watch her compete and become the absolute best gymnast that's ever walked the earth is it's such an honor and to be her friend is, is an honor as well. And, um, you know, I was friends with a lot of them, you know, like Allie Raisman, Kyle Ross, Madison Koshin, Michaela Maroney, all of them. Um, so it's really cool to, you know, still be in contact with all of them and be great friends. Cause we've, you know, been through a lot of stuff together, the ups and the downs and, um, you know, winning world championships together. So just those great memories and great friendships along the way, which is, I, I best, I think the best part of it. So. Of course. Of course, you know, just winning world championships, you know, just knowing gold medalists and not no big deal. Not that, I mean, no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure, man. Um, Maggie, thank you so much for coming on to the show. Is there anything that you want to shout out to Sooner Nation or anybody that you want to mention? Any, anything you want to talk about, real quick? Uh, um, I think I just want to say like thank you, Sooner Nation, for like all the support you've given me over the years and the great relationships you've given me like Jeremiah and um, all the other football players and other athletes. So I think that's so great and um, definitely come out to the gymnastics meets this year. We definitely would love your guys' support. So uh, get some season tickets and we'll see you in the stands. Hopefully. Lastly, you <laughs> mentioned, you mentioned coaching. Yes. Where will you be coaching? I'm Okay, so I'm getting my master's right now, and so I'm the student volunteer coach at OU. So I'm still, I'm still here. <laughs> okay. All right, Sooner Nation, you heard it here first from our very own, the finest, the great Maggie Nichols. <laughs> Maggie, thank you so much for coming on to the show. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. No, really I appreciate, appreciate your it. time. <laughs>